Welcome back to Tales from the World's Fire Science. I'm Clive Gilson, the managing editor on the project, and today we're going to look at the book Terubida Tales, which is a collection of Northern African myths, legends, and folk tales, and uh, we will tell a, a traditional folk tale from the region. The Sahara runs from east to west across the widest part of Africa, a vast desert dividing the continent into two main regions. North Africa consists of the Mediterranean coast from, from Morocco to Egypt, uh, and includes things like the Valley of the Nile as, as far south as uh, Ethiopia. With strong ties to the Mediterranean and the Arab world, North Africans felt the influence of both Christianity, um, certainly by the uh, AD 300s, and then from the 700s on, much of the era came under the influence of Islam. Over the years, uh, Berber peoples have been influenced by other cultures with which they came into contact, you know, Nubians, Greeks, Phoenicians, Egyptians, Romans, the Vandals, Arabs, and of course Europeans. The cultures of the Maghreb and the Sahara, therefore, do combine elements from indigenous Berber, Arab, and uh, sort of neighboring uh, peoples from other parts of Africa and beyond. And as you will no doubt appreciate, the, the rich melange of migrations and contacts has profoundly influenced storytelling among, the, among those varied cultural, ethnic and religious groups across North Africa. There is, of course, the usual mix of, of magic and animism uh, and a strong sense of duty and morality, uh, even if those senses are a little different to some of the cultural norms of the early 21st century. There is typically with, with folk tales and sort of fairy tales, the usual mix of force and brutality, uh, themes that we've seen writ large across all of the books in the Fireside series. Now this book contains around 65 traditional tales, uh, including some elements from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And as ever, my main aim is to tell stories that might otherwise uh, be forgotten or lost to modern readers. Uh, and it's a, a way of, of sharing cultures and maybe helping to make what is quite a complex world just that little bit more understandable. If you do get a chance, I hope you enjoy these tales as much as I have. But the key thing here is the story, so why don't we get down to that? This story has been edited and adapted from uh, Moorish Literature, which was a collection of work from various sources published in uh, 1892. Uh, those sources being um, Adolf Hanoteau, Emile Masqueray and René Basset. This version was taken from the English translation of some of those stories, uh, introduced by René Basset, um, published by the University of France and the uh, Académie d'Algiers in 1901. This is a Berber tale, and the tale is The Stolen Woman. It's said that a man of the Onlad Drabad married his cousin, whom he loved greatly. He possessed a single slave and some camels, and fearing lest someone should carry off his wife on account of her beauty, he resolved to take her to a place where no one should see her. He started, therefore, with his slave, his camels and his wife, and proceeded night and day until he arrived at the shore of the great salt sea, knowing that nobody would come there. One day, when he'd gone out to see his camels and his slave, leaving his wife alone in the tent, she saw a ship that had just then arrived. It had been sent by a sultan of a far country to seek in the islands of the Salt Sea a more beautiful wife for him than the women of his land. The woman in the tent, seeing that the ship would not come first to her, went out of the tent. The people there said to her, well come on board in order to see the whole ship. So she went on board, and finding her to be just the one whom they were seeking, they seized her and took her to their sultan. On his return, of course, the husband, not finding his wife, realised that she had been stolen. The man went to find the son of Kej, the Christian. Between them there existed a friendship, and the son of Kej said to him, Bring a ship and seven men and I will be their guide on the sea. We will not go astray, nor will we be frightened, for the city is three or four months' journey from here. So they set sail in a ship to find the Sultan's city. Eventually, arriving there, they cast their anchor in the bay near the city, which itself was at the top of a high mountain. 
the man went ashore and saw a fire lighted by someone. So he went in that direction and found an old woman to whom he told his story. She, in turn, gave him news of his wife. Now, they agreed to keep silence between themselves. And then the old woman added, In this place there are two birds that devour people. At their side are two lions, just like them, and two men. All of these keep guard over your wife. So, the man bought a sheep, which he killed. Then he went to the two birds and threw them apart at the sheep each. While they were quarrelling over the pieces of meat, he passed by them and came near to the two lions, to which he did the same. Approaching the two men, he found them fast asleep. He went as far as the place where his wife was in, held in prison and attracted her attention by scratching her foot. He was disguised, of course, and he said to her, I have sought you to tell you something. Then he took her by the hand. They both went out and he swore that if she made the slightest noise, he would be forced to kill her. He also asked her which was the swiftest boat for their journey. She pointed out the best boat there in the harbour, and so they embarked in it. There were some stones on board, and when he threw one at her ship that was following them, it was strangely crushed from stem to stern, and all on board perished. Now the man then decided to set sail and find the son of Cage to repay him for his help. But while they were at sea, a marine monster swallowed them and the ship upon which they were sailing. The man and his wife, however, took some pitch and had it boiled in a kettle so that the acrid smoke irritated the monster so much that it cast the ship up on the shore by the sea. And so they continued their journey, proceeding by the seashore. One day they came to a deserted city, and looking at it they desired to take whatever it contained in terms of riches, of silver and gold. But, all of a sudden, the image of an armed man appeared to them. Now at first they could not resist or kill him, but finally they did manage to destroy the, the man and they took all the riches out of the houses of the city. They continued on their journey and eventually they did reach Cage, but he said to them, all I want from you is the ship. So the man and his wife took the treasures and returned to their home. Okay, that's it for today's book intro and story, and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the piece. An elegant little story, I think, uh, and certainly one that, uh, that I've enjoyed reading. Now, you can find out more about me and Tales from the Lord's Firesides as a project at clivegilson.com. Uh, and if you want to subscribe to the channel's Facebook and YouTube indicated at the bottom of the screen, please do. You'll find, if you do, that uh, there's at least a couple of stories, new stories every week. If you like this little intro, uh, then please do hit the like button. Uh, it's always appreciated and clearly it helps with the, the algorithms in, in helping us to surface these stories for fellow uh, watchers and readers. But that's it for now. Uh, so until next time, uh, keep reading, stay inspired, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Take care.